Monetary policy involves the actions of the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States. One thing that's important to understand is that when we talk about the Federal Reserve, we're talking about an entity called the Fed. The Fed is very different from Feds or the Feds. The Feds are typically government agents. The Fed, F-E-D, is the Federal Reserve Bank. When the Fed acts to change monetary policy, what they're doing is they're trying to figure out whether to increase or decrease the money supply. They really only have three tools for doing this, and depending on the way they use those tools, they can increase the money supply, which is known as expansionary monetary policy, or they can decrease the money supply, which is called contractionary monetary policy. The three tools that they have at their disposal are, first of all, they can change the reserve ratio, Secondly, they can change the discount rate. And thirdly, they can use what's called open market operations. So let's take a look at each one of those. Changing the reserve ratio means that they're changing the percentage a bank must hold in reserve. If they increase the reserve ratio, this means that a bank must hold more of a deposit in reserve. So let's say they increase it from 10% to 20%. This is going to have a contractionary impact on the money supply because a bank will not be able to lend out as much and consequently they won't be able to create as much money. The way we see this is through the money multiplier. The money multiplier is equal to 1 divided by the reserve ratio. If the, money multiply, if the reserve ratio is 10%, then we take 1 divided by 0.1 and that equals 10. If the reserve ratio is increased to 20%, then we take 1 over 0.2 which gives us a money multiplier of only 5. So the ability of a bank to create money through lending is diminished and is thus contractionary. If the Fed decreases the reserve ratio, let's say they make it 5%, so they go from 10% to 5%, then the money multiplier increases to 20, 1 divided by 0 0.05, and the money supply will, will increase. So this is expansionary. The second tool of the Fed is to change the discount rate. The discount rate is an interest rate, but it's not an interest rate that I pay or you pay. It's an interest rate that banks pay to borrow money from the each Fed. Other. If a bank is in danger of missing its reserve requirement, they can borrow money from the another Fed. bank, but they have to pay an interest rate to do that, and the Fed sets that interest rate. If the interest rate is very high, then that's an attempt to, to discourage banks from borrowing and consequently, they will borrow less, and the way they can avoid borrowing less is to lend less money. Lending less money decreases the money supply. So at a high discount rate, banks lend less and less money is created. If the Fed lowers the discount rate, this is encouraging banks to lend money. And if they need to borrow from another bank, they can do so affordably. And so this increases the money supply and is thus expansionary. Finally, and most often, the Fed will conduct open market operations. When the Fed conducts open market operations, it is essentially buying or selling U.S. bonds. The Fed goes to the bond market and buys paper. It's what we call bonds sometimes. And so if the Fed wants to buy a bond, what they're doing is you may walk into, into the bond market and want to sell a bond. The Fed comes along and says, hey, we've got some money. We would like to buy the bond from you. So if the Fed gives you money and you give the Fed the bond, this magical event occurs when you take possession of the money. The money is now in the money supply. And the Fed has just increased the money supply by buying your bond and giving you money. As long as the Fed holds the money, it doesn't necessarily increase the money supply. But once it gives it to you, the money supply is increased. Now let's say the Fed wants to decrease the money supply through open market operations. What they would do is they would sell the bond that they bought, or sell a bond that they have bought, and they find a buyer, maybe it's you, you take possession of the bond, and once you give the money to the Fed, that money is out of circulation, it can't be lent by a bank, it can't be deposited by you into a bank, and so the money is out of circulation and the money supply has decreased. So let's review. If the Fed wants to increase the money supply, they want to increase and have expansionary monetary policy. 
they can decrease the reserve ratio, they can decrease the discount rate. These things help to make it more um, affordable and more uh, provided a better incentive for banks to lend money. Or the Fed can buy bonds. By buying bonds, they just give put money directly into the economy. On the other hand, if the Fed wants to decrease the money supply and have contractionary mon monetary policy, they can increase the reserve ratio, they can increase the discount rates, these will affect the bank's lending practices, or they can sell bonds, take possession of money and give bonds, put bonds into the economy and consequently reduce the money supply that way. In order of usage, the Fed most often uses open market, open market operations to change the money supply. They can do this on a daily or a weekly basis if they want. In fact, it very rarely even makes the news when they engage in this kind of policy. Changing the discount rate happens in the next, with the next most frequency, and it happens perhaps every six weeks. And people talk a lot about it when it happens. The Fed almost never changes the reserve ratio because it could have a very disturbing impact on the economy and the banking system. The reserve ratio was last changed in the late 1980s at 210%, and the Fed is very loath to change this um, and, and consequently doesn't use it very often.